Hey guys, here we go with distance learning day two. First problem, we are going to go ahead and add the exponents together on these two terms because when you multiply, the exponents get added. But when you're adding fractions, you guys should know you need to get a common denominator. So um, I'm going to make these both over 6. This guy gets multiplied by 2. This guy gets multiplied by 3. We're looking at 4 over 6 plus 9 over 6. The answer is going to be x to the 13. Oops, I wrote 16 there. That should be a 6. x to the 13 over 6 power. Add the exponents common denominators, and when you get this right here, there was a second step on the instructions. It says to convert your answer to radical form. Remember that for a radical, the bottom number in your fraction exponents is the type of root. So this is a sixth root, and it's x to the 13th power. Top number, exponent, bottom number, type of roots. Number two says simplest radical form. But when you add, you need to combine like terms. You cannot put these together like last time's problem with multiplication. You're doing separate trees on each one. So if I break this down as far as I can, I'm doing a fourth root here. So I need to have four of a kind. I do have enough for a group of threes. So I'm going to have a three times the five that's already out there. This first guy is 15 times the fourth root of, and I have a two left over. Doing a tree on my second guy here, again looking for four of a kind, and I have enough twos to make a group. Two goes outside times the three makes a six for my outside, two times three, and I have a single two left over on the inside. After you do your separate trees, if they are the same number underneath the root, same type of radical here, we are going to combine like terms. Final answer is 21, 15 plus 6, fourth root of 2. All right, on to number 3, which is asking you to convert it from vertex form, which is this guy here with the parenthesis, into standard form where everything is just multiplied out. First thing I'm going to do is foil my x minus 3 with another x minus 3. And if you do that, you will get x squared minus 6x plus 9. That's what you get if you distribute out your parentheses here. But you still have a negative 2 being multiplied to it, and you still have a plus 10 afterwards. Got to distribute our negative 2 now. We got negative 2x squared, positive 12x, negative 18, and then the plus 10. Final answer for standard form is negative 2x squared plus 12x, and we're going to have a negative 8. So that is my standard form equation. All right, number 4 is asking us to graph the equation we just got. It's x squared, so we know it's going to be some sort of a parabola for our actual graph right here. And we could do the vertex form or the standard form. I could do a negative b over 2a on this guy, but that would be kind of a lot of work when I can already see what direction the graph is going to move. So this graph, if you do the left, right, and the up, down, left, right does the opposite. We're going right 3, and we're going up 10 on our picture. True story here, I actually, after I wrote that down and made the problem here, I realized that was going to be really big to graph, going all the way up to positive 10, but um, I didn't have any white out, and I didn't want to cross it out. So that's why you guys are going right 3, up 10. Number out front is a negative 2, so you go down 2 over 1 in both directions here. x squared makes a parabola. So I graph it, and that is my um, graph. Vertex is 3, 10. Domain for parabolas is all real numbers, and for the range, the y's are going to be less than or equal to the vertex, so less than or equal to 10. All right, next problem, number five. Got to get my parentheses by itself if I'm solving for x. So I subtract the 10, get that easy step out of the way there. When I do that, I need to do an exponent to cancel out the 5 over 3 power. In order to cancel out a 5 over 3 power, I want to do a 3 fifths power to both sides. So you do the reciprocal exponent, these will cancel out. 
So I'm going to have just x minus 6 right here. Um, if you don't have a calculator handy that can do this, you can just do 32 to the exponent of 0.6. That's what 3 over 5 is. Or if you're in honors, I did show you guys how to do this by hand. You should get 8 when you actually do 32 to the 3 over 5 power. Then it's easy to finish. You add the 6. Final answer for this one is x equals 14. Okay, number six is asking us to evaluate, which means they want an actual number for the answer. Best thing to do here, um, we did talk about multiplying insides and stuff, but these are not the same base. This guy's a base two. And remember this guy, if you don't see a base, common log is base 10. Best thing to do is just get separate answers for these two parts and then add them together. So if I do the thing that I talked about earlier on um, last semester or last quarter, you would do this to this power equals here. So that is going to say 2 to the x equals 1 over 128. And I have to solve and guess and check till I get that exponent. So I did the thing that we had talked about before. So when you're trying to get a fraction like this, I know it's got to be a negative exponent. 2 to the seventh power is 128. So the exponent that makes this work is a negative 7. So I have negative 7. 2 to the negative 7 gets you 1 over 128. The second guy right here is going to say 10 to the x equals 100. And that one is pretty straightforward. You should just get x equals 2. So problem said to evaluate negative 7 plus, and I got 2 for this guy. Final answer on number 6 is a negative 5. All right, moving on to the second page. Looking at my first problem right here, these are our good old word problems with quadratics. This is an upside down parabola shaped graph. And they give us the equation here, h is the height. This is supposed to be in feet. I forgot to give units. Um, and t is time in seconds. First one says, what will the rocket's maximum height be? When you see the word maximum, you should think vertex. Vertex is negative b over 2a. That is our little formula for the vertex. And I made the numbers pretty easy to work with here, since you guys don't have the fancy calculators at home. We're going to have negative 32, and it's going to go 2 times a negative 16, which is also a negative 32. So if you divide that out, you get a 1 for your x. The x is like your t time in this problem. But they asked for the maximum height. They want the y that goes with this. So all you're going to do is plug that 1 back in. And you can um, evaluate this in a calculator, type it in Google, do it by hand, whatever. The numbers with the 1 aren't that bad. You should get a 26 for the height. So that's 26. And again, the units are supposed to be in feet. Number eight asks how long it will take to return to the ground. And when it returns to the ground, that means the height is going to be zero. We did these problems back first semester, but you're going to throw this guy in the quad formula. So we have for our setup here, x equals negative b. Negative b is going to say negative 32 plus or minus the square roots. b squared would be a 32 squared. And 32 squared, if you do the math on that, is 1024. So that is 32 squared. Then I have to go negative 4 times negative 16 times 10. Negative 4 times a times c. That part is a positive 640 all over 2 times a. So that's all over a negative 32. The next step I would do, um, if you had your nice calculators, you would just type it in like this and it'd be cool. I'm going to make this guy into a decimal and actually do square root of 1, 6, whatever it is. I, I don't know. Adding those numbers together. If you actually do the square root on that, it ends up being about a 40.79, I believe. That's just from doing the square root part of the problem. Then you can do negative 32 plus this, enter, divide, negative 32 minus this, enter, divide. The two answers you should get are going to be negative 0 0.274 and positive 2.27. Obviously, the negative answer for time doesn't make sense. Final solution here is 2.27 seconds to hit the ground. Final two problems here. With these guys, i to a power, you have to remember that i squared equals negative 1. That's our basic rule. 
So when I do this problem, I have to take one of the i's off because I can't divide it by two. I'm gonna have i to the 50th times i to the first. I take i to the 50th, I do 50 divided by two. That's 25, which is odd. So this guy is a negative one. But then I still have the i that I took off. Final answer for this one is a negative one i. And then my last problem of the video, if you're trying to do these systems problems, I see people still mess them up because they try to do stuff like an isolated variable here and it's just a mess. Best thing to do is distribute a number that will cancel out all the fractions. So two and six both go into the number six. You could also do a 12, that would be fine too. If I distribute a six to this whole problem, it should work out nice. So six times x is six x divided by two makes a three x for the first guy. Six times y divided by six is a one y. And then six times three is 18. Got myself a fresh equation right here. Don't need my gross fractions anymore. If I keep my second equation the same, I have this. Probably easiest thing to do is distribute a negative two, and now I'm just doing regular algebra one style elimination. So you guys should be pretty cool with that. Uh, going kind of fast here, I got negative two X equals negative 20. Looks like X is gonna be a 10. And if you plug X back in and get Y, you should get Y equals, I believe it is a negative 12. So that is gonna be our solution.